We're looking today at Paul's prayer in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, where Paul says, Therefore we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is actually, I suppose, what you would call a very dangerous prayer. The ultimate goal of the prayer is that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. But to enter in to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ being glorified in us and us in him, we have to be counted worthy of this calling. Why is this such a dangerous prayer? Well, you only need to go back a few verses to 1 Thessalonians and verse 4, where Paul says that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations which you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. This prayer that our God would count you worthy of this calling is not just a nice, sweet pastoral prayer. This is a very dangerous prayer because Paul is saying, I pray that God would count you worthy through the persecution that you endure. It's not a subject that many of us in the Western church like to hear. We will pray for the persecuted church, but we wouldn't want persecution to come upon ourselves. And yet Paul says here in this prayer, I pray that God would count you worthy of this calling. The calling to persecution is a very high calling because through persecution, the church is glorified in Christ and him in the church. Are we willing, are we willing to pay the price that we would be glorified in Christ and that Christ would be glorified in us? The early church knew exactly what this was all about. If you go to Acts chapter 5, it says this. This is after the apostles have been placed on trial by the uh, Sanhedrin. And it says in Acts 5 and verse 40, they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. The early church found a glory, found a joy in being counted worthy to suffer persecution for the name of Jesus. And so Paul here in Thessalonians does not pray, I pray that your persecution would stop. I pray that God would take you out of this persecution. He prays, I pray that you would be found worthy of this calling. Jesus himself said in John chapter 17, when he was praying before the Father, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Jesus never says, I will take you out of it. I will get you out of the way. He actually says, I pray that you would keep them from the evil one. He doesn't say, I'm praying that you will take them out. And even if you go to Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is speaking on the mount during the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11, Jesus comes out with a radical statement. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets 
who were before you. When Paul prays that the Thessalonian church would be found worthy of this calling, he is praying that they will stand strong, that they will continue in the faith, that they will find their glory in Jesus, that Jesus would be glorified in them. And ultimately, Paul is praying that they would receive great reward in the kingdom of heaven. Let's not always be earthly minded when we pray. Let's always keep the kingdom of heaven in focus when we pray. Paul was praying for their reward in heaven that they would receive. They would receive greater reward because they had been persecuted for the name of Jesus. Are we willing to be blessed because we are persecuted? Do we see it as a blessing to be persecuted? This prayer tells us that it is a blessing to be persecuted. It is a blessing to suffer for the name of Jesus and to be found worthy of this calling because great is our reward in heaven. God bless you. Bye-bye.